Hello, welcome to the European Open Briefing for Tuesday, August 1st. I'm Harry Bajan, currency analyst at XM.com, and we're going to be looking at what's happening in the currency markets today. So we're seeing uh, another big slump in the US dollar. Uh, this comes after the latest revelations uh, in the White House, uh, where the the newly appointed uh, chief of staff uh, sacked the communications director, Anthony Scaramucci, who had just been in the post for just uh, 10 days. Uh, this uh, gave way to other currencies to break above the key levels. Uh, we're seeing the euro above the $1.18 level and the pound is above $1.32. Uh, uh, the Aussie uh, did break above the 0 0.80 level. It didn't manage to make new highs though, uh, and it did retreat after the RBA's monetary policy statement, where uh, the central bank uh, warned about a rising exchange rate and in commodities, oil prices are doing rather well at two months highs, uh, despite only limited sanctions by the US on the Venezuelan uh, government. So let's start now having a closer look at what's happening with the dollar. We can see both the dollar index uh, and the dollar yen pair uh, are at a near fresh lows. Uh, yesterday, uh, the dollar index uh, touched the 14 month low, 92.78. Uh, dollar yen uh, is at a near seven week low, 109.98. It has climbed uh, slightly above the 110 level, uh, so they're pretty much uh, the dollar is pretty much still subdued this morning. Uh, yesterday, the the newly appointed chief of staff, General John Kelly, uh, fired the communications director, Anthony Scaramucci. Uh, this comes after um, some rather obscene uh, remarks by Scaramucci during an interview with the New Yorker uh, last week. Uh, and we had already seen uh, the resignation of the House White House spokesman, Sean Spicer, and the previous chief of staff, uh, Reigns uh, Priebus. Uh, all due to the appointment of uh, Scaramucci. So uh, it is hoped that uh, John Kelly's appointment will bring in some dis discipline to the White House, but overall uh, the latest uh, episode uh, has further dented confidence in the Trump administration to deliver on the, uh, the big tax reforms and infrastructure spending, which were part of his election uh, splege, uh, pledges. Uh, plus, on top of that, we've got um, declining expectations of a Fed rate hike. Having said that, uh, we do have some key data out later today, the ISM manufacturing PMI uh, and the personal consumption and spending figures plus the PC price index. Uh, so if we do see some strong readings there, we could see some uh, uh, the expectations of another rate hike this year being reignited. Uh, let's move on to the euro now. We can see the euro surged yesterday to uh, top the 1.18 level for the first time since January 2015. Uh, it's also at a two and a half year high against the Swiss franc of 1.1454. Uh, uh, the single currency is basically benefiting from the expectations that the ECB will be begin tightening monetary policy uh, early next year. Although uh, despite that surge, uh, we did see uh, some rather strong eurozone data where uh, there was less of a reaction in the euro. The core inflation, the flash core inflation reading for July saw an unexpected pickup to 1.3% uh, year on year, uh, and the unemployment rate unexpectedly fell to 9.1%. Uh, but the uh, the main rise for the euro came on the back of the dollar weakness. We've got flash GDP numbers for the eurozone later today, so those will be uh, closely watched. Uh, looking at the pound, even the pound um, is uh, doing very well at, against the US dollar. It's uh, risen above the 1.32 level for the first time since September 2016. Um, We've got PMI uh, figures coming out this week, uh, starting with the manufacturing PMI today. Uh, the big focus, though, will be uh, the Bank of England's th Super Thursday, where we're going to have the, the latest monetary policy decision, the meeting minutes, and the quarterly inflation report. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see whether uh, we're going to have, once again, another split vote. Uh, if you recall, at the last meeting, uh, we had a five to three uh, vote, uh, three members voting for a rate hike uh, and uh, we've had some hawkish remarks since then but uh, most analysts expect the Bank of England to stay on hold for some, some time yet. It's also going to be interesting to see whether in the inflation report the bank is going to downgrade its growth and inflation forecasts given the fact that uh, recent data out of the UK uh, has been on the downside. We saw a sharp slowdown in the first half of the year. Uh, overall though, apart from the weaker dollar, dollar the, the recent talk of th that the fact that the, the UK government uh, 
um, is warming up to the idea of a transition deal once the UK leaves the EU that has uh, supported uh, the pound um, uh, amid uh, weak data uh, overall uh, for the UK. Uh, moving on to the Australian dollar, we did have the Reserve Bank of Australia monetary policy meeting uh, uh, a few hours ago. The bank held rates at 1.5% as expected, uh, and they stuck to their neutral policy stance. Uh, the Aussie had climbed to around 0 0.80, 40 level uh, before retreating after the RBA statement. Uh, it fell to around 0 0.80 level. Uh, still, it's not too far from last week's two-year high of 0 0.86. 65. Uh, the RBA, uh, it, 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 it did come to a bit of a surprise for the markets, but on the whole it should have been expected given the RBA has in the past previously uh, been against uh, uh, sharp appreciations of the Australian dollar uh, and they uh, basically uh, toned up their warnings uh, for further appreciations. They said the higher exchange rate is expected to contribute to subdued price pressures in the economy uh, and that it would result in a slower pickup in economic activity and inflation. Uh, they also said overall they were very upbeat about the economy, but they did say that the slow growth in real wage wages could restrain uh, spending levels. Uh, so um, that's why we're seeing that, that slight reversal uh, in the uh, Australian dollar. A quick look at uh, oil prices now, because oil prices did jump high yesterday. Um, it had benefited at the start of trading yesterday on expectation that the US government uh, will impose sanctions on Venezuela after uh, a vote on Sunday in the country where uh, the public voted for a new constitutional assembly uh, that would potentially give the president uh, more powers. Uh, but for now, the US has decided on very limited sanctions uh, aimed uh, solely at the Venezuelan president. Um, and we also had uh, a report by the U.S. Energy Administration that showing that U.S. output rose to 9.17 million barrels per day in May. Uh, despite that, we're seeing uh, firmer uh, crude oil prices this morning. WTI uh, hit a two-month high of 50.41 yesterday, and Brent crude uh, reached 52.92, and they're both trading near those levels uh, this morning. Uh, and the reason for that is, despite the only limited sanctions. Uh, um, the the outlook for Venezuelan out, output is looking rather bleak because of uh, the fact that the industry there is uh, severely under uh, lacking in investment, plus the civil unrest that we're seeing in the country that could potentially hurt output from the OPEC member uh, in the coming months. Uh, looking at today's economic calendar, we had uh, strong data out of Japan and China in terms of the PMIs. Um, the Nikkei manufacturing PMI was just slightly down in July, uh, comfortably above the 50 level. And in China, uh, we had a much stronger than expected manufacturing PMI. The cash in PMI uh, beat expectations to jump to 51.1 in July. Uh, we also had um, we're also going to have the Eurozone final PMI readings shortly, as well as the UK one. Uh, but in the US, the focus will be on the personal consumption and in income figures, as well as the core PCE price index uh, and the ISM manufacturing PMI. That's it from me. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.